All right, guys, welcome to RC Mojo. Time's been a bit tight this last week, so I thought, why not start another project? Here we have a comical grasshopper, a gift from a friend. It's a small rear wheel drive buggy designed to wheelie around. Same chassis as the Wild Wheelie 2. It's almost ideal for a first time build. We got some very eye catching box art with various stats on one side. Spinning the box around, we have the kit requirements on the other the type of radio, tools, and a couple of the available hop-ups. The oddball bit with this kit is the gearbox comes pre-built, which could be very nice if you've not tried anything like kit building before. Even though Tamiya gearboxes tend to be very easy to put together, it does take some pressure off. However, Tamiya being Tamiya, it's built with plastic bushings, which is fine I suppose, but if you want the model to last a really long time and run its best, you have to take the gearbox apart to swap the bushes for proper bearings. It's only 8 screws, but nonetheless it's a bit annoying. With the lid lifted off the box, we can see what lies within. And compared to our last unboxing, there really isn't much in there. Don't be fooled though, it ends up being an awesome little buggy. Classic Tamiya fun over all out performance. Next, I'm going to clear the table and start bringing out all the bits so we can have a quick look. And first out, we have the body. As is typical with Tamiya, the holes for mounting are already drilled. All you have to do is cut it out, literally just with a pair of scissors. Sometimes a tool like a Dremel can help here and there, but some files or even just some sandpaper will get the job done. Then we have the tyres. The front ones are old school buggy style, almost like aircraft wheels, only extra chunky. For the rear, Tamiya have been clever, and rather than spikes or some other pattern that'll wear out in no time, they've used a nice chunky block pattern. Even skidding around for hours on end, they should last for ages. These are the wheel inserts that are going to add a bit of colour. This parts tree has the old style front bumper that looks a bit like the old grasshopper one. It's got a bit of flex to it, so it should absorb bumps quite nicely. Here we have a parts tree that should be familiar to anyone who's built a TLO one or similar. A lot of those parts have been used on many, many Tamiya kits. This bag has two of the same tree. We've got the exhausts, body mounts, side bumpers, again, all made out of a slightly flexible plastic. The comical grasshopper comes with the classic wild willy driver. It's only the shoulders and up, but it's really nice to have. The kit comes with a TBLE02S ESC, which is all you really need on this kit. It goes forwards, it goes backwards, and it has brakes. The only downside is the cutoff voltage isn't really friendly to LiPo batteries. They can be modified to make them LiPo friendly, or you can use a separate LiPo alarm. Or of course, if you want to keep it simple, you can just use a Nimai pack instead. Here's the gearbox, ready to go with its plastic bushings. It's been used on a lot of Tamiya kits over the years. The old Wild Dagger had two of them, very solid with huge wide gears. The wheels are your typical glue on type. Although you will get away without glue, unless you're really abusive with the bashing. Here's the chassis, pretty basic. In fact, the gearbox ends up making up a lot of the structure. This one has some big bits from the Wild Willy that we don't use, but it does give us the option of the super wide front bumper. Great if the driver might be tempted to go headfirst into curbs and walls. Then we have the metal parts bag with the oil for the dampers which are simplified, but still quite good. On the grasshopper, they're white, which is going to make them stand out quite nicely. We have the good old antenna tube, which might seem a bit obsolete with today's short 2.4 gigahertz antennas, but Tamiya use it to make flagpoles, which is rather fun. Next, we have the paperwork. First is the warning sheet with lots of small print no one's ever going to read. Next, of all things, we have a setup sheet. Now, the last one of these I had was for a 1 8 scale nitro buggy. OK, so it's not quite a race setup sheet, but it does explain about ride height and how to change it. A nice thing to include. Because the chassis is used on a couple of models, we have a separate sheet for the body. This one, of course, is for the grasshopper, which I think is the easiest one to put together. The last of the paperwork is the chassis build manual. 
it has an excellent set of diagrams, as you would expect. I feel like they've put a bit of extra effort in with more descriptions to help the first time builder. Very nice. Last out, we have the bag with the decals and window masks. Now these will probably be the most difficult part of the entire build. They all need to be cut out and applied one at a time. It's one of those things where all you can really do is practice to get the hang of it. There's a few tips to get started, but in the end you just have to go for it. In addition to what Tamiya give you, there's a few more bits and bobs to make it a runner. Obviously, you're going to need a battery. Now, to make it easy, a 6L 7.2V NiMai with a Tamiya connector is ideal. A two-channel radio. Now, this one's a bit fancy being eight channels, but for this kit, you really don't need it. The most basic setup, like a Flysky GT2, will do the job. All you need is a steering channel and a throttle channel. We need a steering servo. Again, you don't need anything fancy. Any standard size servo with metal gears will work just fine. You don't need huge torque or high voltage. Keep it simple and you'll be just fine. This one's 15 kilogram centimeter, but anything around 10 kilogram centimeter or more will do the job perfectly well. Then we need some paint. Now for the grasshopper, if you want to copy the box art, you need a can of white. Tamiya do nice paint, but I tend to go with Core RC when I can. You get a bit more for your money and it works a treat. It's optional, but I would also highly recommend a bearing set. Not only will it make the buggy run smoother and slightly faster, it'll also cut down on the wear and tear. The only downside is you're going to have to crack open the gearbox to fit them. But it's really not a big deal though, and we'll be covering it in the next video. If you want to get fancy with the body, a can of black paint is quite handy too. Rather than use the decals for the bars around the windows, we're going to be painting them. Because the paint's on the inside, they won't get damaged when we inevitably crash the buggy. If all that seems a bit much to keep track of, don't worry. Most model shops have starter packs with enough bits to get the buggy running. Usually you'll get something like what you see, plus a basic charger to charge the battery. More often than not, you'll also end up with a small discount for buying it as a pack. There's one more set of bits to think about, the tools. You don't need much for this kit. Obviously, you're going to need a screwdriver. Now, a Phillips driver will do, but if you can, try and get a couple of JIS, Japanese Industry Standard Drivers. They fit the screws better, making them far easier to deal with. Plus, a pair of pliers always come in handy. A pair of side cutters to trim the parts from the plastic trees. A sharp knife, preferably with a handle. Also not shown, you're going to need a pair of scissors for the decals and window masks. And well, that's about it. One kit of bits ready to be built. You can get the same chassis with the Hornet body. The build is exactly the same, but the body is a bit more complicated and fiddly to put together. Also, you get Tamiya's multi-purpose driver rather than Wild Willy. Otherwise, it's the same assembly. Now, I'm not sure how many projects we have on the go now. Three or four at least, I think. Oh well, it's going to keep us busy for a little while to come. Alright, until next time, as always, thanks for watching. Like if you liked, subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment if there's something on your mind. Bye guys!